Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jackie Rapat. I'm the Associate Dean of Research in the College of Rehabilitation Sciences. And I'd like to welcome you to this Illuminate session. The purpose of the Illuminate Speaker Series is to inspire and incite our constituents to consider ways that rehabilitation science research can enhance the lives of those who we serve. Through the series, we offer an, <coughs> excuse me, an opportunity to exchange information and ideas internal and external to the college that advance and enhance knowledge an opportunity to develop collaborations and partnerships within and beyond rehabilitation sciences. We've recently reviewed our processes for this series and in the very near future, we'll have an application form on our recently revised website so that you can nominate future Illuminate speakers along with links to past Illuminate presentations. So now I'm going to ask Dr. Amin Chaku, Assistant Professor in the Department of Occupational Therapy to introduce today's Illuminate speaker, Dr. Madahi. Thank you, Dr. Ripat. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, please join me in welcoming Dr. Uh, Ali Madahi. He is a postdoctor of law in our college. And today he's going to talk about the application of engineering uh, concept and solutions to telerehabilitation with a focus on uh, remote hand uh, therapy. Um, uh, Dr. Madahi, uh, you will get 30 minutes to talk, and then we will get uh, like 15 or 20 minutes for Q uh, qu question and answers. For the audience, if you have questions, please feel free to share them in the chat box. And we're going to go through that uh, just after uh, Dr. Mandahi talk. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shagou. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking time to attend my today's presentation. I am Ali Maddai, a postdoctoral fellow with the College of Rehabilitation Sciences at the University of Manitoba and the CTO and co-founder of Tactile Robotics, a tech company located in the Esmar Park area at the U of M. I received my PhD in the field of signal processing and control engineering uh, around two years ago. And starting April 2019, I have been in my tax accelerate postdoctoral flow involving with the projects related to the rehabilitation sciences. I aim to uh, realize the academic research results into real applications in a close collaboration between the University of Manitoba and Tactile Robotics. Today, I'm going to talk about the inclusion of robotics, haptics, and Internet of Thing technologies in the rehabilitation practice. First, I'm going to give a brief introduction about one of the common diseases that exist all over the world, followed by the segment of the problem caused by this disease and uh, the general solution that exists to solve this problem. Then I will talk about the conventional and technology-based methods that have been developed to help solve the, this problem, along with some examples of the existing technologies. I will then uh, post some stumbling blocks uh, for the existing technologies and the use of them uh, from a different perspective and will explain our proposed solution along with the main features and technical aspects of our uh, platform. Asteroid. Asteroid is a known word to everyone, and according to World Health Organization, is defined as a syndrome characterized by the sudden onset of the focal or global neurological deficit, lasting more than 24 hours, or uh, because of a little uh, outcome. Hopefully, unfortunately, advances in emergency stroke treatment have helped to limit the dam damage to the brain. The damage to the brain occurs either because of bleeding into or around the brain or from the lack of uh, blood uh, flow to a region where nerve cells are rubbed out vital supplies of oxygen and nutrients. Let's take a look at the statistics on the stroke prevalence. For example, in the United States, every year, around 800,000 uh, people uh, suffer a stroke, and around two-thirds of them uh, can survive, which is around 533,000 individuals. 
and every year in Italy around 190, 196 uh, cases of stroke occur, uh, of which 80% of new cases and around 20 patient, patient, uh, persons are relapses affecting previously affected subjects, which is around 40,000 people. As we know, after a stroke, it's estimated that around 20% of cases do not recover the use of upper limb, and most of the subjects undergo a partial recovery. So, loss of functionality in the use of upper limb is one of the main factors affecting disability. And we know that the people who survive the stroke perceive the loss of functionality of the upper limb as one of their major problems. And the impairment in, in, impairment in the upper limb is in fact one of the up, first obstacles to the recovery of the competence in the management of ADL activities. So the problem, the main problem caused by the stroke is the loss of functionality, especially in the upper limb uh, part. And there exists various several technologies and techniques for treating the upper limb damage by the stroke. Specifically for the uh, upper limb rehab and hand rehab, uh, there are various conventional and technology-based methods that I'm going to talk about. The goal of rehabilitation are to optimize how the person functions after a stroke and the level of independence, as well as to achieve the best possible quality of life. And the rehabilitation helps the patient who has had uh, experienced the stroke relearn the skills that are suddenly lost when a part of the brain is damaged. There are various conventional methods for uh, treating the hand rehabilitation. As an example, the mental imagery is uh, one of the conventional methods, uh, which is the conscious representation of an action based on the activation of the motor neurons of the nervous system. And mirror therapy is a method through the observation of a specific movements or tasks performed by the physiotherapist or by an affective limb reflected in a mirror position in the, at the level of the midline of the body. And functional electrical stimulation and transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulations are used to activate muscles and general sensory inputs. With respect to the technology-based techniques, uh, the rehabilitation with robotic systems offers patient the a high dosage and training intensities, allowing a repetitive practice of the specific movements and functional tasks. The indicator devices, which are also known as haptic interfaces, are the robots consisting of devices to be connected to the end of the robotic arm so that the patients hold the device to interact with the environment. And exoskeletors are used to follow the anatomy of the patient's upper limb, to which they are attached in some points, dots constituting a sort of artificial musculature. There are various kinds of technologies uh, using the robotic and haptic systems uh, all, uh, all over the world. One of the interesting uh, ones is the wrist robot, which is a three degree of freedom exoskeleton, allowing different kinds of movements uh, of the wrist. As another example, by Manu Track, uh, uh, which is a two degree of freedom device, allows the patient to perform the pronation, supination, and flexion extension movements uh, when doing the upper limb rehab. One of the most interesting 
technology is the no fake, uh, no fake uh, smart gloves that measures the movements of the forearm uh, using some accelerometers, uh, IMU sensors, and bending or flex sensors uh, 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 placed on, uh, on the finger. And with respect to the haptic gloves, a three layered, uh, the, the, the photo shows a three layered spring mechanism on a hand exoskeleton uh, with some elastic components serially connected to each other to perform the flexion extension of three joints only using one actuator. So, we have seen different kinds of technologies, but uh, considering the existing and available solutions and technologies, there exist some important factors that are affecting the upper rim rehab practice. These factors can be the accessibility rate to the cave, the rate of patients engagement during the rehab practice, the service availability to remote communities and the qualitative feedback that exists at the moment uh, for the patients and uh, care providers. And last but not least, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, which has slowed down the rehab practice. So considering these stumbling blocks, we are going to provide some solutions to tackle these assembly bellows. As an example for uh, the accessibility to the care, the statistics says that the number of physiotherapists that are uh, available per 100,000 uh, population in Canada in urban area is only 68 physiotherapists. Uh, while this number is around 41 in the rural areas. And the corresponding numbers for the province of Manitoba is 72 for the urban areas and 28 for the rural areas. Note that 72 and 28 is per 100,000 population, which is a very low number. And we just went through the percentage of the physiotherapists working in the rural area, only 10% 10 10 10 of physiotherapists are working in remote communities and rural areas, while this number is only 14% in province of Manitoba. So it shows that the access to physiotherapists and clinicians is very difficult in rural and areas and uh, remote communities. For this purpose, we are improving the rehab process by employing the engineering and computer science knowledge in the rehab practice. Using the robotics and haptics, we, ha we, are, we have designed a comfortable, easy to use, low cost and uh, a smart and haptic, haptic or actuated glove for the patients with upper limb disability. By employing the computer science knowledge, we have provided the patients with the user-friendly mobile applications during the rehab practice. And the Internet of Things have, has helped us to provide the remote communities and rural areas with the tele-rehab. That, that will be the, the focus of the rest of this presentation. And also, we have defined some key performance indices and quantitative measures aiming to let clinicians and care providers receive instantaneous feedbacks in numbers and graphs for, uh, from the rehab session and enable them to effectively monitor the patient's improvement over different sessions of the rehabilitation. So what's upper limb tele-rehab? Upper limb rehab consists of two main sides. The first side is the patient side. The patient is staying home and they don't need to go to the clinic or set, set any appointment uh, with the clinician or care provider for the rehab practice. Uh, 
They stay home. They are. They have access to mobile applications. They can actually do the rehab task, and the results, the data, and the video are remotely sent and transferred to the care provider in the clinic. The care provider is has a kind of desktop application to communicate with the patient. I will explain more in detail about the features of the mobile app and the desktop application that we have developed. For example, in the patient side, the patients are assigned the list of rehabilitation tasks according to their, need, their needs. As you can see some examples uh, in the picture uh, as uh, shown, uh, which is showing the screenshot of one page of the mobile app. The patients are presented their own personal rehabs and they can track their daily progress. Also, they, they are able to opt in for daily reminders for the rehab tasks, meaning that, okay, how many times they are going to uh, repeat the uh, rehab task uh, uh, for their, uh, actually, according to the severity of the uh, impairment that they have. We have also uh, considered some uh, extra features uh, in the mobile app for the patients. For example, each rehab task is introduced with some recorded videos and the task have some kind of written description so the patients can actually read the de description to follow the task properly. And also the practitioner can set a daily goal for the uh, rehab task for each patient. And also the important thing is that the patients do not need to set a time or appointment to do the training and the rehab task. For the, uh, at the moment, they have to actually set an appointment to go to the clinics and um, conduct the rehab task. But using this uh, platform, they can stay home, they can start the training at any time that they wish. As I mentioned, um, the, when the patients are doing the rehab task and they are communicating with the clinician and care provider, uh, they can actually see their live video during the training. And th uh, there is only one option. They can actually, if they are not uh, willing to see the videos, they can actually opt out the live video from the application. They are also given the live measurements of how good they are performing the rehab task. As shown in the uh, actual photo, before the period, we have defined some KPIs, performance, quickness, greatness, and other KPIs, and even how, uh, how much they are bending the, uh, each uh, finger uh, uh, of the hand during the rehab task. So all of this data will come with a kind of report for the after the session is done with the, for the for both the patient and the care provider. And there is a there is a feature that the clinician and care provider can set a specific time for performance of the rehab task, so the patients cannot stop the training and performance of the task before that uh, defined amount of the time. And also, as I mentioned, the KPIs are graphically shown to the patients after the, uh, doing the task, uh, which is giving them a kind of quantitative, actually, feedback about their progress. It's not uh, like uh, just hearing that, okay, so you did great, you did good, uh, you need to, for example, practice more or some qualitative um, uh, expressions. They are given the numbers and graphs and they can follow up the, their progress, uh, which helps them engage uh, into, uh, during the rehab practice. With respect to the care provider side, they are given a desktop application to communicate with the patient. And the care providers can watch the video of the task performed by the patients in a real-time fashion. 
and also they can uh, uh, we, uh, we we have uh, we are uh, we have a feature to record the video and the care providers can have access to the video of the task uh, in a later time to watch it if they wish all training logs and kpis are also sent to the care provider after the training is done and this helps the provider to analyze the performance of their patients uh, and try their improvements. This is a screenshot of the one, uh, the, one of the, the pages of the desktop application for the care provider. As you can see, the patient's information can be seen on the top, including the name, age, phone number, and other stuff. And the training history Align with the video of the uh, patient's task, the date, time, and some actually graphical uh, KPIs showing the uh, showing the range of the motion of the fingers uh, for the uh, for the patient. After this session, the care provider can even modify the program task. For example, they, uh, 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 after some sessions, they observe that, okay, they need to change the rehab task for this patient based on the improvements that they are seeing. So they are, uh, it's not like this that they, uh, they can, uh, they, there are only some predefined tasks. They are able to modify the program task based on their observation. They can also write a message or record a video uh, or leave a me voice message uh, to explain the progress and other treatment factors to the patients and communicate with them. And one of the important features of the platform is the scalability of the database, which allows the care provider to send new and new videos, not only the predefined ones, and updates our database accordingly. To develop this platform, uh, we have, as I mentioned, we have used the different knowledge of uh, using a team of engineers, computer scientists, programmers, software developers, and uh, statisticians. For example, uh, for the mobile app, we have developed a cross-platform mobile app that is uh, can be used by for the uh, by the patients to work with uh, uh, that using. Uh, on the under iOS or Android operating system. So the mobile app is available uh, 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 under both operating systems. We have designed a local database so that the patient's data can be sent wirelessly, uh, actually from the uh, sensory system to the mobile app and the local database helps the patients to actually have access to the results in a later time on, on, the, uh, on the mobile application. We have the, uh, developed a novel sensory and actuated system in the, uh, actually as a smart and actuated glove that measures the motion characteristics of when the patients are performing the rehab task. And uh, one state of the art communication protocol has been utilized to wirelessly transfer the data from the sensory system on the GLO to the mobile application. We have also developed some custom libraries, which are Taito Robotics, uh, actually IP, uh, to pair and unpair our sensor in presence of different Wi-Fi networks. So the patients can use this platform anywhere. It's not uh, like, uh, actually, uh, it's not um, uh, like this, that they can use this uh, the smart glove and the mobile app only under one Wi-Fi network. One, if, for example, they uh, move from one place to other place with a different Wi-Fi uh, credentials, they can easily pair and unpair the sensory system to the new Wi-Fi system. 
And also we have a database that is designed on a cloud server and which stores all videos of the task and KPIs. The care provider desktop application is connected to the cloud server, which actually let them monitor the patient's performance remotely. As I mentioned, several KPIs have been introduced uh, which provide the quantitative measures of the tasks performed by, by the patients and the user-friendly desktop application that we have uh, for the clinicians and care providers to communicate with the patients. The tele-rehab platform that we have designed and developed, uh, actually it facilitates the rehab practice by the patients with no need to be present in the healthcare centers or clinics. They can stay home and actually perform uh, and continue the rehab practice. This platform provides a comfortable accessibility to the rehab care not only for the pa patients residing in the main cities, but also for the remote communities and rural areas, areas where uh, they you actually access to the rehab practice is difficult and they don't need to move to main cities to actually uh, use the rehab, uh, uh, to uh, use the rehab uh, practice. As we know, we are now currently during the pandemics and COVID-19 outbreaks and the rehab in this platform allows the rehab practice not to stop during the lockdowns and pandemics. And we know that the stop in the procedure of the rehab practice will cause the patients give up and this platform will help them actually not to give up the a rehab procedure because they are able to use our uh, platform which is the IoT base to practice the rehab task. One of the most important features of this platform is that unlike the conventional methods uh, of the rehabilitations that the patients are seen to give up the continuing the pre uh, treatment process, the platform will engage the patients because of the features that we have included in the platform, such as the quantitative feedbacks, the graphical, the tables, and the measure, actually the numbers that we are giving uh, the patients after performance of the rehab task. And although this, uh, the platform is designed for the patients of stroke discharge from the hospital, however, it can be used by the the people or patients with the hand injuries due to the farm work or, it, or it, an accident, the prosthetics and burned hands. In the platform that we have developed, the KPIs are defined, actually have been defined by a team of engineers and statistics. For sure, we require some feedbacks from the experts and clinicians in authorized center, which is the, in our, uh, the future is above actually our project to collaborate with the clinicians and rehab experts in uh, Riverview, actually health center, uh, to get their, uh, receive their feedbacks about the KPIs. Based on the feedback that we need, the, we are open to add new KPIs and tasks uh, to the actually platform and uh, update our database to cover a wide range of re upper limb rehab practice. And this, for as I mentioned, the platform uh, features that we have developed uh, either for the mobile application or for the desktop uh, application of the care provider, they uh, need to be reviewed by the experts and we would be happy if we are, conduct, uh, we are contacted uh, for the uh, collaboration to receiving the feedback from the experts. 
you can reach us at uh, rtlab.ca and title robotics.ca. Thank you again for taking time to listen to my presentation. I would be happy to answer your questions if any. Thanks so much, um, uh, Ali. So uh, we open the, the floor for some, uh, the chat box for some, uh, for some questions, if any. Sure. Uh, Ali, I'm thinking of one of the possible scenarios due to COVID-19. Um, I'm thinking of the scenario of training uh, physiotherapy students with such device. Do you think that the requirements will be that different from one-to-one -one training? Like now you are explaining one therapist and one patient, right? But if we switch to, uh, to a format of one main user who is the professor of group of, of, of group of instructor, and then uh, many students, does the requirements will change or, uh, and are you able to design, develop that, uh, that solution? Uh, a very good question. Actually, uh, as I mentioned, we are open to actually suggestion to add the, uh, for the new task, new actually uh, KPIs uh, to the to our database system. So even this platform can be used for teaching the uh, actually uh, rehab students. You know, so uh, based on the uh, actually the needs, if the professor and instructor has a plan, so we can actually uh, receive their feedback, add the task or other uh, features to the platform. And uh, we are quite flexible uh, about adding features to actually uh, let the, even the, this platform to be used the, in the educational sector as well. Mm -hmm. So we have some questions here in the chat box. Um, we have Orshi Cooper asking if this has been trialed in rural or remote Manitoba. Uh, actually, not at this stage. We are actually we are in the development stage, and we are just trying this uh, in a lab uh, medium. Yeah, so uh, we have taken one setup at home and the other setup in the company, and so we are tr just uh, trying to communicate remotely to make sure everything uh, goes well. But in early future, we have the plan to um, use it in actually remote areas. To try it, okay. We have another uh, question from uh, Yumi Sakamoto from uh, Computer Science Department. Uh, she's asking if a lay person would, will be able to uh, calibrate the uh, smart glove prior to its use. Uh, actually, the smart, uh, we have a kind of, uh, I, I didn't explain actually in detail about the smart uh, glove and the uh, actually accurated part of the glove because we have some kind of IP and actually sensitive information on that and we might want to file the patent on that. So, but uh, we we have the uh, kind of self-initialization and auto-calibration procedure for the sensor. So, uh, uh, even the uh, layperson can use the device, but just by just actually pressing a button and uh, which is the actually power button and use the smart gloves. There is no specific or difficult procedure for calibrating the sensor. Then you, it looks like you have a first client. Arshi is interested in trying this out in human determinants next year. So uh... sure. And I have received some questions. That's encouraging. Um, you, you can read the questions from me. So next question is from uh, Katrina. running this type of I think this is the business plan that we are thinking out and we uh, we are thinking of a kind of subscription uh, actually plan uh, to uh, in case the for example the patients wants to have access to the mobile apps so they need to pay 
actually for that uh, reasonable price and cost uh, uh, so and uh, that business part actually um, the thing, the thing that I the, actually the plan that we have is the kind of subscription actually fee uh, that we charge the uh, patients uh, for that. If it can be a monthly or for a period of six months or one year, but uh, to be honest, uh, we have not decided about that part yet. So. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have next question from uh, Arshi Cooper. It's about the uh, plug and plug. Uh, plug and plug capabilities um, because she's worried about um, the uh, remote areas of Manitoba. Can you elaborate on that, please? Uh, about the about the rural uh, is the issue. Can, can I add a comment here? Oh, hi, Yasra, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, sure, please go ahead. Sorry, before going to the next question, I think the main purpose of this question is to uh, is to know how the government would deal with the clinicians, right? And I think this is some some policy that the government, the federal or provincial government should go, should adopt actually considering our current situation. So we are going to maintain social distancing, staying uh, at home. So this is something that should be negotiating. And this is not our, our responsibility to do. Once the technology is there, once we can prove that how safe is it it is and how we can help people actually to stay safe safer and have a qualitative and quantitative uh, rehab session together i think this is a good start to to uh, let the government know that there is a new window the new opening in uh, uh, treatment so they have to deal with that the insurance should deal with that this is something I think bigger than uh, all of us here and Tiger Robotics. And uh, this is something political that the clinician or the government should deal with later. Thank you for addressing that. You are, sorry? I just said thank you for addressing that. Oh, no problem. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I mean, with all due respect, um, government is certainly, um, you know, they're a little parsimonious with the money right now. Um, feasibility and the economic impact or the economic benefit would, would have to be uh, part of the, of the study. And, you know, it's early days yet, but I think you need to build that in because government's not going to jump to the pump on this one. Not a chance. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. But the point is that this is the session that should be held for a patient. It could be remotely, it could be in the office. Uh, what I mean is that if we have a good technology to be used, this is something that we, we actually practice with dentistry. So our setup with dentistry, which is called Dentic, all the universities, the dentists, they like it very much. We started promotion and at the first they had the same concerns that who is going to pay for that? But uh, they, they saw that. So the students, patients, all of them uh, can actually work remotely, especially during, during such a pandemic that uh, this solution is working very well. So once we have a solution, once it works well, we can think about those parts, but without without having the solution, the platform, and without showing how interesting and impressive it is, I think we cannot claim that, oh, we are going to design this, find a solution. No, you should design it, you should show it to us, we will find the solution. Uh, Alia, can you explain the timeline for this um, solutions to be uh, ready for trialing if, if people are interested in. Mm. Yes, sir. can you help me about that? Because we need to consider different actually uh, scenarios to make it complete. Uh, and the other thing is the re uh, revealing the information, as I mentioned, the, regarding the design that we have for the robotic and haptics part. Uh, Sure, yeah, absolutely. So this platform has four parts. 
Uh, one of them is the sensory system that we have already uh, uh, developed. Dr. Shuko has published the paper, I think, and he is working on other papers as well for validation part. Another part is the smart glove. We all, uh, we almost have it, like 90% of that is completed. The software programming part is working very well. We expect to have it ready to give it to uh, Dr. Shuko's hand by the end of January and the haptic is lived by the end of March. So by the end of March, we would have a platform that is working remotely in a teleoperation mode, a bilateral teleoperation mode, and it has four features. So uh, I would say in less than four months, we have the prototype of the system. Um, and one, one thing, if I may, one thing I want to add, uh, so uh, Ali just explained the, is a, a white sensorized glove that is in the market, not completely in the market. I mean, it's ready to be commercialized. The price of that is 15,000 US dollars, which is like 22K in Canada. Uh, and in, in the field of rehab, I understand that this is a huge money. If you want to ask a patient to pay, even the rental plan, the leasing plan, if you want to have it, if you want to ask a patient to pay like 500 per week or two weeks, so that's a big money. The platform that we have and we are going to offer the patients it's 4,000 US dollars. And the marketing model, the, pro, uh, the, the uh, model, the sales model that we have, we are going to give it to the clinicians and clinicians at the low price can actually rent it to the patients. So the price is something uh, uh, else that I wanted to uh, discuss here. So in terms of price, uh, uh, the current company actually cannot beat us. Uh, Ali, do you mind going back to the question by R.C. Cooper? She's asking if, um, like, how it works in remote areas when they don't have uh, access to internet or simply Wi-Fi hasn't, like, enough bandwidth. You explained uh, how, how it's or unplug it. Can you please re-explain that in detail? No. Actually, this, uh, the tele-rehab platform requires the Wi-Fi connection for sure. So in case the Wi-Fi is not available, it's not possible to uh, actually make a communication between the care provider and the patient. Uh, Ali, you mean in real time, right? I'm sorry? Uh, in real time, you mean. But they can store the results and send it to the clinicians whenever yes. they have yes. yeah yeah if there is no wi-fi so i i don't think that we can actually uh, find a place that doesn't uh, support the wi-fi but if the wi-fi is not great yes uh, uh, it depends uh, actually uh, upon the wi-fi speed the internet speed the ping rate and if it is not uh, high enough so um, they can, uh, they, uh, it, it's a little bit difficult to have the live sessions and real-time communication, but uh, it's possible for the patients to actually do the task re and the data or as I mentioned uh, in the features, they can store the data in their cell phone and at the later time, they can actually upload it to the database uh, and the care provider will be able to have access to the data in a later time. So there's another question about, uh, would a person be able to put the glove, uh, take it off uh, by themselves or would they need the required assistance? Okay, uh, we have actually talked a lot about the design uh, of uh, an easy to use uh, a smart glove by the patients. If the one hand actually of the patient is healthy, so uh, even when we were designing the gloves, we were trying to simulate the one hand as the actually impaired hand and one hand as the healthy one. And it's easy for the patient to actually just tighten the, uh, tighten the glove on the impaired hand. 
and they don't need help for that one. But in case uh, uh, both hands are impaired, for sure they will, uh, they, they will need an assistant for that. Thank you, Ali. I see another question by Yumi Sakamoto. Your technology is very exciting, Ali. Thank you. Uh, have you considered auditory feedback as well, um, uh, or even gamifications, if the user can use your technology independently and repetitive movements are desirable? Can you elaborate more a little bit about the question? What do you exactly mean by auditory feedback? Uh, yes, of course. Hi, Ali. Hello. Um, so like I have uh, um, worked on something similar to what you have actually created. And uh, we have presented our results at uh, um, Augmented Humans um, where Dr. Choku actually uh, chaired. And uh, we actually used uh, um, auditory feedback, which I really liked. So, for example, whenever um, our users or like, you know, participants, we actually conducted an experiment and then like, you know, we asked participants to test our technology and then like, you know, there was an auditory feedback where they could actually hear nice sound whenever they did their movement properly. And then that's um, sort of like motivated the users to actually um, work harder or make precise movement and stuff like that. And then your technology uh, provides haptic feedback, right? Right. Yeah. And then I just wondered, like, you know, if you would consider, like, you know, adding some auditory feedback. So, like, if something is not functioning, like, repetitively, like, if a user is failing, like, you know, providing some feedback might actually guide them even better, I was wondering. Would you uh, consider something yeah, like that? Very good question. Actually, we have not actually included this into the platform, but it's actually a feature, as I mentioned in the future, but I'm very thankful of you to mention that. We can add it as a feature uh, because I explained a little bit about the uh, actually switching a little bit from the qualitative feedback to the quantitative actually measures. So, uh, we have tried to show the progress using the numbers and graphs uh, to the patients, but it's possible for us to actually add these kinds of auditory feedbacks to, as you mentioned, motivate the uh, patient, uh, patients more for continuing the rehab uh, actually uh, practice. That will be very exciting. Thank yeah. you. Thank you too. Thank you, Ali. Uh, do we have any other questions uh, by the audience? Um, um, I don't see any. So Ali, I would invite you to uh, maybe to send us the last message, last uh, take home message for the day, if you have any. Uh, actually, we uh, we are looking forward to uh, uh, receive the experts and uh, actually uh, Experts in the rehab area about our platform to actually make it much stronger as much as actually we can to develop our database, you know, and include many features, such as what Yumi mentioned, you know. So we would be happy to have a kind of a collaboration with the clinicians and experts. Uh, to actually make our solution and platform unique. Thank you very much. It was very, very uh, exciting, very clear, and uh, I really liked the, all the questions from the audience. You had even uh, had some uh, some um, uh, some suggestions for improvements. Everything is okay, I think. Yeah. Uh, I would like to thank everyone here for uh, listening and the interaction with the uh, our guest presenter, Dr. Ali Madahi from the College of Rehabilitation Science and uh, Tecta Robotics. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Great talk, Ali.